Hello everybody. Today we will review transcription. The first step in the um, pathway of information transfer from DNA genotype to phenotype to proteins that are formed based on that information encoded in DNA. In this first part, in this first recording, we will go briefly over the RNA structure and classes of RNA, as well as the major components which are required for transcription. The second recording will discuss or we will explore the process, the uh, step-by-step process of transcription. Before we start before we start to discuss primary and secondary structure of RNAs and different classes of RNAs, I would like to talk a little bit about ribozymes, RNA molecule which have catalytic activity. It's why they are called ribozymes, RNAs with enzymatic activity. They were discovered in 1980 one by Thomas Czech. Why is this is such an important discovery? It was such an important discovery because a ribozyme actually confirmed existence of this molecule as a original material, original genetic material, basically material which could encode and also replicate itself. The self-replicating enzymes, ribozymes, arose anywhere somewhere between three and four billion years ago, uh, years ago and may have actually begun the evolution of life on the earth. Nowadays, um, if you look, we look back, we see that over the time, proteins enzyme protein enzyme evolved and they are much better catalysts so basically they overtook most of the enzymatic function from rnas but some rnas still possess those function and in addition rnas play a vital role in biological processes such as transcription replication rna processing and translation so basically they are those basic messenger between genetic code which is in the nucleus and the phenotypic manifestation of genetic codes which is uh, revealed in protein structure. In addition, um, during the last 15-20 years, many new discoveries showed that small RNA molecules microRNA, siRNA play a fundamental role in biological processes regulating translation and transcription. Let's now discuss primary structure of RNA. Um, similarly to DNA, uh, RNA consists of polymers of nucleotides joined together by phosphodiester bonds. You see here is phosphodiester bonds. Um, phosphodiester bonds, as you recall guys, is covalent bonds. Yes, it is covalent bonds. Um, major similarities between RNA and DNA structure are that both are composed of nucleotides and in both nucleotides are joined together by phosphodiester bonds. Also, when RNA is synthesized during transcription, it also synthesis also follows. It goes from five prime to three prime and similarly as in DNA. However, there are differences. What are the major differences? Firstly, sugar. Sugar in RNA is ribose. Okay, you recall in DNA we have deoxyribose, and that major difference here is a hydroxyl group on two prime carbon, and this hydroxyl group is behind the sensitivity of RNA to cellular enzymes. So it's behind um, low stability of RNA. Now we will come to this later. Uh, first, I would point out the differences. Um, bases. DNA, you know, is adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. In RNA, thymine is replaced by uracil. 
third thing, DNA is usually double is double helix. RNA is usually single stranded, so it has single strand and secondary structure can take different shapes. So there are many different types of secondary structure. We will come to it in next slide. While in DNA, secondary structure is always double helix. And stability, of course. DNA is highly stable. RNA is easily degraded. And this makes sense. Think about that. DNA is our blueprint. It's that material which store all information about us, who we are, how we behave, and so on, so on. While RNA, it's only messenger, which brings that information copied from that blueprint and brings it to cytoplasm to translate it into protein, into phenotype. So we do not want, or respectively ourselves, do not want to, do not need or want to accumulate high levels of RNAs and stability is very low for RNA, so it's easily degraded. So if you think about reasons and the um, connection between structure and function, you will find that it's very um, reasonable, respectively, it makes sense. And I strongly advise you when you study, always try to connect structure and function and mechanism why reason for certain mechanistical changes. It, it, you will see that it will make much sense. Also, RNA is single-stranded. It can form secondary structure. It can form loops, it can form stems, it can form very complex secondary structures, as you can imagine, for example, in transfer RNA. So how is it possible? So the base for the secondary structure is um, our sequences, which are anti-parallel. So anti-parallel sequences enable two uh, complementary bases come together and bond, form hydrogen bonding. For example, let's see here on the stem. Let's find the sequence. It's right here. It's G-A-A-A-G. This is what forms the loop here. Now look what if you what are sequences before you have C and G, which are complementary, another C and G, A and U and U and A. So this is what forms the stem. So anti-parallel sequences enable forming of so-called herpines. Herpines which can show as a stem. Stem would be very simple, two complementary anti-parallel sequences, or they can actually form stem loop sequences or structures. It is when anti-parallel sequences like here are interrupted by different sequence. So if you realize that the secondary structure is enabled or is determined by primary RNA structure, primary sequences, you imagine the variety of secondary structure that RNA can form. And it is the secondary structures are very important for RNA. Um, function. And we will talk about those when we will talk about the structure, for example, of tRNA, how secondary structure plays a role in their function. So, to sum up structure of RNA, you have here a table which summarizes all similarities and differences between DNA and RNA. Keep in mind similarities. Both are composed of nucleotides, and in both nucleotides are joined by phosphodiester bonds. Difference is type of sugar, presence of hydroxyl group of 2' prime carbon, strandness, secondary structure, and stability. 
RNA molecules perform a variety of functions in the cell and therefore they are classified into different classes with different functions. First let's talk about three classes of RNA which you can find in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Those are ribosomal, messenger and transfer RNAs. Ribosomal RNAs together with protein form ribosomes and we know that ribosomes are in cytoplasm where um, actually they function as a um, machinery as a, where the proteins are translated based on the sequence of the mRNA. So mRNA, what is messenger RNA? Messenger RNA carries this code instruction from the DNA into polypeptide, so from the nucleus to cytoplasm. It's that messenger which copies nucleotide sequence from DNA and bring it in form of mRNA to cytoplasm, where mRNA is based on which the polypeptide chain forms. Um, transfer RNA is linked between coding sequence of nucleotide in the mRNA and amino acid sequence of polypeptides. So if we turn it around, we can say that tRNA is a translator. It translates language of nucleotides into language of amino acids. In eukaryotes, we have additional classes of RNAs. Keep in mind, these classes we will discuss now, you only find in eukaryotes, they are not in prokaryotes. Firstly, there are small nuclear RNAs. Small nuclear RNA interacts or combines with protein and for small nuclear ribonucleoproteins. Their roles is in processing of RNAs, particularly converting pre-mRNA into mRNA. In addition, we have small nuclear RNAs, which play a role in processing of ribosomal RNAs and small cytoplasmic RNAs. Um, the function of the latest one is not really well defined because they were connected to many different variable functions. Very interesting classes of RNAs are microRNAs and small interfering RNAs. Um, they are small molecules which carry out RNA interference. Um, they can either degrade or trigger degradation of mRNA. They may inhibit translations, they can interfere with uh, gene transcription. We will talk in more detail about micro and siRNA in the next chapter. And one thing I just want to stress right now is the importance of micro RNAs in regulation of gene expression during embryonic development. Another class of RNA which is very interesting is spivoy interacting RNAs. These RNAs are similar to microRNA and their major role is to suppress expression of transposable elements which are also known as jumping genes and they are found in mammalian testes. Let's just summarize classes of RNA what we already discussed. First, you can see that a ribosomal messenger and transfer RNA are present in both bacterial or prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms. However, some classes of RNA, which are summarized right here, such as small nuclear RNA, small nucleolar RNA, microRNA, siRNA, and PV interacting RNA are only found in eukaryotic organisms. There is another class of RNA we didn't discuss, which is a CRISPR. RNA. CRISPR RNA is found in prokaryote, prokaryotes, particularly in bacteria, where they protect bacteria from bacteriophages infecting bacteria. It's very interesting um, system, CRISPR, which actually is nowadays very hot topic for development of the strategies to correct faulty genes for genetic engineering. 
So we already discussed structure and classes and basic function of RNA. So let's now talk about transcription. So transcription is a process in which sequence of DNA is transcribed, copied into RNA. And this RNA afterwards serves to translate the protein. So it is DNA, RNA, and protein. What is this? You recall we talked about the central dogma, which was, uh, which was formulated uh, after DNA discovery, which claims that a flow of information goes from DNA to RNA and from RNA and to proteins. Nowadays, we know that some viruses can actually replicate RNA, and they can even retrotranscribe RNA to DNA. So there are certain organisms, certain viruses, if we can call viruses organisms, which goes against the central dogma. Nevertheless, let's talk now about the requirements. You have outlined on classes of RNA, which are involved in the cellular functions. And now let's talk about the requirements for transcription. So what do we need? Of course, we need template. Similarly to DNA replication, RNA has to have template on which the new sequence is formed. Of course, it needs building blocks, it needs substrate, and also transcription apparatus, enzymes. Um, so you see the steps are very similar, but there are many differences. Um, very often what I encounter that students um, mix DNA replication and transcription. So I would try during this recording to point at the differences and similarities. What I advise you to do is take two pieces of paper and side by side draw DNA replication replicon and draw transcription, transcription unit with all requirements and enzyme enzymes which are necessary. It would really help you to clarify and distinguish between DNA replication and transcription. So what is the template for transcription? Similarly as during DNA synthesis, a single strand of DNA from double helix serves as a template right here. What does it mean is that double helix has to unwind and one of the strands serves as a template. So the strand which serves as a template we call template strand and strand which is non, not transcribed into RNA we call non-template strand or sometimes we call it coding strand. Coding. Why coding? It all lies in sequence of RNA synthesized on template strand. The RNA, similarly as during DNA replication, is entirely parallel to the template and is complementary. So if you take sequence of RNA which is entirely parallel and complementary to DNA template strand, you see that if you replace uracil by timing, you get exactly the same sequence. So basically from non-template strand, you can actually read sequence of mRNA if you replace timing for uracil. Okay, so template and non-template strand. Oh, keep in mind, mRNA, RNA synthesized on DNA template is complementary and anti-parallel. So basically these are two things which are the same in DNA replication and also transcription. Now, what are differences? Differences are that during DNA replication, whole DNA molecule is replicated, while during transcription, you have only portion of DNA which is transcribed into RNA. Only genes encoding proteins needed at the, that moment in cells are transcribed. It would not be efficient for cells to transcribe all genes from all DNA. Also, I point at it again, 
only one strand is transcribed into RNA, and the strand is complementary and anti-parallel. So the next question is, if only one strand is transcribed, so which strand serves as a template? It is defined by promoter, and we will talk about it uh, on the next slide. It is always the same strand for particular gene. You recall it has to go, RNA has to be complementary. So if for gene A, promoter is right here. So basically the synthesis would go from 5 prime to 3 prime. So basically this strand, bottom strand, would be the template. The same would apply for gene C. However, look at gene B. Basically promoter is located here, so this gene would be transcribed from upper of strand and it would go again it has to be anti-parallel so 5 prime to 3 prime so uh, bottom line either strand can serve as a template however one particular gene is always transcribed from the same strand which we call template strand for that particular gene. So for gene A and C, bottom strand is template strand. For G gene B, the upper strand is a template strand. So how does cell know or how the transcription apparatus knows uh, which strand to transcribe, where to start, where to end? All this is defined within the transcription unit. It is a stretch of DNA that encodes RNA molecule and all sequences which are necessary for the transcriptions. So, classical transcription unit composes of promoter, which is DNA sequence that is not transcribed into RNA. However, it is necessary to initiate transcription. Second part is RNA coding sequence. It's actually sequence which is um, sequence of DNA which is copied into RNA molecule and terminator. It is a sequence that the last part which tells apparatus to stop. So it is a signal to end transcription. Terminator, however, be careful, is transcribed into mRNA. So you will find terminator sequences in RNA. So here is outline of the transcription unit in the DNA. And you can see immediately regions which we discussed, promoter right here. Promoter is DNA sequence where transcription apparatus binds. It does recognize it and bind it, binds to it and starts transcription. If you mutate promoter, you will completely abolish transcription. Now, promoter is necessary for initiation of transcription. However, it is not transcribed transcribed into RNA. Transcription starts at so-called transcription start site. That's where first nucleotide of RNA is encoded. Okay, so next downstream of promoter, you have RNA coding regions. It's a region which is encoded in DNA and transcribed into RNA. So RNA coding region refers to DNA sequence which is transcribed in RNA. It does not necessarily mean that all this transcribed sequence will be translated into protein. Be aware that there are 5 and 3 prime so-called UTR untranslated region UTRs, but they are still transcribed into RNA. So they are part of RNA coding region. Now, 
The stop of transcription is indicated by terminator right here. And as you can see, as we discussed before, terminator sequence is transcribed into RNA. So what is the substrate for RNA synthesis? It is ribonucleoside triphosphate. Ribonucleoside triphosphate. Uh, it is the sugar, you look here, sugar has hydroxyl group on 2' prime carbon, so it's ribose, and it's triphosphate, from which two phosphates are cleaved and nucleotide will be incorporated in growing strand of RNA. It is always added to 3' prime hydroxyl group. So the growing RNA molecule always adds the new nucleotide to 3' prime hydroxyl group similarly as in DNA. So it will always be added to this 3' prime hydroxyl group. So the synthesis will go from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. One important thing I did not mention before is that when RNA transcription is initiated, it does not require a primer. Do you remember during DNA replication, DNA cannot start replication before the RNA primer is added. Now, during transcription, RNA polymerases can initiate transcription without primer, so primer is not required. And transcription always starts at 5' prime and new nucleotides are added to 3 primes. So new growing strand of RNA always go from 5 to 3 primes. So it copies DNA from 3 primes. So if this is a DNA molecule, let's say this is a template. So the template is, here is 5 prime, here is 3 prime. So if RNA is synthesized, so it has to start here. It would be anti-parallel 5 prime and it goes to 3 prime. So synthesis of RNA as synthesis of DNA goes from 5 to 3 prime and it copies DNA strand from 3 prime to 5 prime. Remember, transcription does not require a primer. The transcription is initiated and carried on by RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase is different from DNA polymerase. And as you recall, RNA polymerase does not require primer to initiate transcription. The function uh, or the action of RNA polymerase is enhanced and sometimes regulated by accessory proteins which uh, play a role in different stages of the transcription. So let's first discuss bacterial RNA polymerase. Typically, bacterial cells only possess one type of RNA polymerase, which is um, multimeric, large multimeric enzyme. And it does catalyze synthesis of all mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA in bacteria. You will see that it's different in eukaryotes. Eukaryotes possess different polymerases for transcription of different RNAs. Now, bacterial polymerase is a multimeric complex which is composed, as outlined here, by two alpha subunit. There are two copies of alpha subunit, one beta subunit and one beta prime subunit. These four subunits play a role in transcription. The, the fifth subunit, omega, actually stabilizes this complex. It is not necessary for transcription per se. However, the complex would not be stable without omega. 
Uh, this five subunit forms the called core RNA polymerase. Core RNA polymerase is necessary for transcription. Additional subunit is sigma factor. Sigma factor joins core RNA polymerase and forms the called holoenzyme. Now, what is the role of sigma factor? Sigma factor is required only for initiation of transcription, for promoter binding and positioning correctly RNA polymerase. Um, so how is it possible that bacteria transcribe different genes so they have different uh, um, promoters? So how come they have only one RNA polymerase. So the difference is in sigma factor. They have multiple bacteria, have multiple types of sigma factor, which initiate and binds to, firstly, binds to different RNA uh, polymerases and to different promoters and initiate synthesis. Now, uh, you know about the uh, antibiotics. Many of the antibiotics actually target uh, members of transcription and translation machinery, which are particular in bacteria. So even so, that bacterial transcription and translation is very similar to eukaryotic, there are differences. And these differences were pinpointed and helped to design some antibiotics such as rifamycin, which kill bacteria by inhibiting RNA polymerase. As discussed before, eukaryotic cells possess several RNA polymerases, not just one, as bacterial cells. Now, we will predominantly focus on RNA polymerase 2, which catalyzes synthesis of pre-mRNA. In addition, it might be involved in the synthesis of small nuclear, nuclear, and some microRNA. Uh, ribosomal RNA, which is found in large RNA uh, ribosomes, is synthesized or catalyzed by RNA polymerase 1, Ribosomal RNA found in small subunit of ribosome is catalyzed by RNA polymerase 3. RNA polymerase 3 also catalyzes synthesis of tRNA and some small nuclear and microRNA. The three classes of RNA polymerases are found in all eukaryotic cells. In addition, in plants, you can find two additional classes, RNA polymerase 4 and and five. Uh, RNA polymerase 5 is interesting because it takes part in formation of heterochromatin in plant cells and RNA polymerase 4 is involved in some siRNA transcriptions.